Welcome to part two of my Tic-Tac-Toe Bot series, uh, which I'll be writing in C. A um, few notes to go over before I get started with that. Um, if you haven't seen part one, you might want to check that out. Um, I don't do any coding in that one. I just set up the project, talk about the tools I'll be using. Um, you can find that on my blog, Aaron.Baher.Biz, right here. Um, if you have any comments about it, you can leave them uh, below the video at the video hosting site. It'll be at BitChute, uh, might be at YouTube also, but um, they all have comment systems. I don't have comments at my blog because it's, it's a blog. It's too much of a hassle there. Um, or you can email me at Aaron at Baher.biz. I'd certainly be interested if anybody wants to go to that much trouble to um, let me know what they think. I'd like to hear it. Um, this isn't really, I'm not teaching C here, so I'm not necessarily going to explain everything I do. Um, it's more of a demonstration of what you can do with it or how a, how a project goes, at least for me. Um, I may do some teaching another time. I've thought about teaching programming either um, online or at the local community college, so that's something I'm, I'm considering but that's not really what this is and so I'm not going to explain every you know every function that I use or everything I do I'll just kind of be mixing in some explanation as I go um, this is very much a making it up as you go project um, I haven't planned this ahead and so you're gonna get you're gonna get to see sort of as you're gonna get to see it as I figure it out um, other than some brainstorming while I was mowing the lawn that kind of thing um, what you're looking at is the extent of my planning right here. And I don't know how long I'll make the videos. Um, ordinarily with a programming project, the, the longer you can go in a session, the better. And so, you know, if, if, I, had, if I had the time, I would do this all in one chunk, but I, would, I will probably break up the video one way or another. I'll either break up the sessions or I'll break up one big session into smaller videos. We'll see what happens. Um, all right, so some thoughts on the design of this program. Um, first of all, it's a tic-tac-toe program, so there should be no winners. Um, tic-tac-toe should always end in a tie unless somebody is kind of working at losing. So one of the goals is going to be that they're that all the games end in ties but I think at the beginning I'm going to try to make the the computer players stupid enough that they can lose and so that way we can then improve the intelligence of it until everything ends in a tie which shouldn't take very much um, it's all going to be computer versus computer this isn't really a game in the sense that a person doesn't play against the computer, it's just computer versus computer, because again, it's tic-tac-toe, it's not a real game. This is just to to practice the code and to test some things. Um, so, you start thinking about the way you lay out a tic-tac-toe board. You've got the nine cells, you know, I'll just number them here for convenience sake. And you start thinking about how you're going to represent this in, in code or in data and in, in memory in a program ultimately. And the first thought is, well, you make this, it's a three by three grid, you make it a three by three array with, you know, X values and Y values. But then I thought about that and thought, really, that's probably overkill for this because then you get into the, the logic of figuring out when because you, you're gonna have to get into the logic figuring out is this row a winner or is this column a winner or this diagonal a winner and then you're gonna it's you're gonna have to do some figuring on that which it's not gonna be hugely complicated but it's gonna be more complicated than if you just make the board a simple array of nine spaces and I'm going to make it 10 spaces just because that way I can um, I can index them 1 through 9 instead of 0 through 8 because in C most programming languages arrays start at 0 so I think I'm going to go with a an array of 10 
items and then I'll index one through nine because then what you can do is you can just have because there's only eight directions you can win in there's three rows three columns and two diagonals so you can say okay I need to check eight lines basically so I need to check one two three four five six seven eight nine one four seven two five eight three six nine one five nine and seven eight or sorry seven five three so if i check those eight combinations i'm good and i don't have to deal with trying to figure out okay i don't have to deal with two dimensions really i'm not really dealing with two dimensions the program is only going to see it as one dimension with eight different possibilities and that's going to simplify things in the code quite a bit i think um, like i said i haven't haven't really done it yet so we'll, we'll see what happens but i think that's going to simplify things <coughs> so if i switch over to the code which the other day in part one i started with just uh yeah, let's leave that at the top just for fun um I'm going to make the board a global variable because it's going to be neat. It's going to need to be accessed from a lot of different functions. I think there's going to be, I'm, I'm picturing a function to print the board, a function to, you know, um, check the board for winners, check the board for losers, all that kind of thing. So I think it's just going to be easiest to have that one global variable. Um, and it's going to be uh, an array of integers. Now, my first thought, again, was if I sw switch back to my uh, design document here, you know, your players normally are X and O, and then you'd have a space for the non-used spaces. That would be the normal thing. But I think if I store the, the moves in memory as integers, it's going to simplify the, the programming here a bit. Um, if I stored characters X and O, it wouldn't it wouldn't take up any more space. Actually, it might even take up less space, but space isn't an issue with this program. But then there would be it, it would just make the the logic of it more complicated, I think, because I'd have to say if something equals X, then do this other thing. And it's going to be there, I think there's going to be some interesting math I can do basically if I say, okay, player X is 1, player O is negative 1, and spaces are zeros. And that's, so that's how it's going to be. So if I reorder that, say, okay, we've got negative 1, 0, and 1. Those are our three possible values for each space. It can be player negative 1, or no one, or player 1. And then they'll reorder these, say, okay, negative 1 is, is player O, 0 is the space, and 1 is X. So that's how I'm going to be picturing this in my mind as I'm coding it, is th those are my three players, negative 1, o, 0, and 1. And then when I do things like printing the board, or outputting who won, or anything like that, will convert to O and X. All right, so you got to start thinking about the logic of how this program needs to go. The first thing you're going to want to do is to initialize the board. And it's early in the day, so I can't type yet. And let's go ahead and write that function. Um, we don't need to return anything from it. And it has no arguments. And all it needs to do is go through the board and set everything to zero, our, our value for when no one has played in that spot yet. So that's all that needs to do. It just needs to set up the board as being all empty empty spaces all right 
Now what comes next? Well, what is a game of... Actually, you know, I'm going to move that because I forgot about something. What I'm going to do actually is forget about a knit board for a second. What I'm going to call for main is a function called play a game. Because later I want to be able to wrap that in something which plays a whole bunch of games, like plays a million games and then returns the results. So for now I'm just going to have it play one. And so init board can go in the play a game um, function. And that is going to return a value because it needs to return a value to say whether anyone won or not, I believe would be a good, good way to go with that. Doesn't have any doesn't have any arguments. And then that will init the board. Okay. So we're basically done with main for now. I'm gonna push it down out of the way. Get some space here. I'm probably not gonna comment do a lot of commenting on this because I'm talking as I do it. I'm going to be, I guess you could say, doing audio comments. Um, we'll see you later. Maybe I'll spend some time um, filling in comments, you know, just going through and commenting, um, trying to have good style. So play a game. First thing it needs to do is knit the board, especially because... If I do wrap this in something to play multiple games, then the second time it plays the game, the board is already going to be full of stuff. So, definitely have to have that there. Um, and it's going to, let's just go ahead and put in a comment, now that I said I wasn't doing comments, to say this needs to return the winner, or zero if a tie. Okay, so that's what we want to do at the end of play a game. So once the board is cleared, what happens in a game of tic-tac-toe? You have to think about, okay, what, what actually happens? Well, someone takes a turn. We're just going to say X takes a turn. We're just going to say X goes first. It doesn't matter who goes first because it's both, they're both the computer. But we'll say X goes first, and then there are up to nine turns, right? At, after nine, the board has got to be full, so you can only have nine turns. So that sounds like a loop. Um, so we have i equals one. Well, no, we don't. We don't have i equals one. Sorry. <laughs> Less than nine. So we want to loop nine times and take a turn for a player. Now, which player is this going to be? Remember I said um, over here, player O is negative 1, player X is 1. So I want to have the player be either 1 or negative 1. Well, how do I decide that? If I want 1 to go first, and then I, then I want negative 1 to go next, and then I want 1 to go, and then I want negative 1 to go. So I want to switch back and forth, and switching back and forth between two values puts you in mind, or should put you in mind, of something modulus 2. Uh, modulus, for those who don't know, because it's really more of a programming thing than a... I mean, it, it comes up in algebra, but I don't think it gets taught a lot. But modulus is when you take something and divide it by a number and then get the remainder. It's, it's the remainder function, you could say. So if I take i and divide it by 2 and take the remainder, then the first time when i is 0, the remainder is going to be 0, right? 0 divided by 2, the remainder is 0. And so it's going to call it with a 0. Well, that's not quite what I want, is it? Let's say if I, if it's 1 and I divide it by 2, well, then it's 1. That would be what I want. So, I've got to stop and think about this. What do I want to do here? Okay, I think what I want is a ternary operator to say, okay, if the modulus returns a 1, go ahead and 
use 1. If it returns a 0, use negative 1. Okay. There might be a more elegant way to do that, but it's not coming to me right now here in the morning, so that's what I'm going to do for now. So we're going to take a turn, and the player taking the turn is going to be either 1 or negative 1. And the first time through when I is 0, it's going to be negative 1. So I guess O will go first. Actually, that's I want X to go first just because that's kind of traditional, so I'm going to switch those around. So X will go first, and then O will go, and then X will go, and O will go. Okay. And I do need to return something from that. Um, let's say winner. Because there can be up to nine turns, but what if someone wins before the ninth turn? You need to be able to bail out of this loop, right? You want to stop taking turns at that point. So we have to have take a turn, return a winner, so we know what to do with that. If there's a winner, if, you know, if the winner is 1 or negative 1, then we want to bail out of this loop. And so we'll continue. No, not continue. Sorry, we want to break. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and keep looping through the turns. Okay. So we need to create a winner variable here for that. All right, so now if you get here, I'm going to stop and think again. There's a fair amount of stopping and thinking in programming, um, which is one reason I didn't really know how, how this would go, um, because I'm also not that good at talking while at thinking while I'm talking, but we'll see what happens. Um, okay, so we'll get here. If we've gotten through all the nine turns then winner is still going to be whoever won the last turn, right? Whether that turn was a winning turn that stopped the loop early or whether that turn was the ninth turn and now we're looking at a winner or a tie. So now we can say um, report winner and that will be a little function that will tell us who won the game if anyone did. Okay. And then we will return winner. All right. So that's our play a game function, which I think is finished. I'm, br I'm breaking this up into fairly small functions, which is you know, generally considered a good idea. I might overdo it here just because I think it's going to make it easier to show what I'm doing. Um, so we've got two new functions to make here. We've got take a turn, which needs to return an integer. And it takes an integer, which I'm going to call PL for player. needs to, like I said, it's going to return the winner if there's a winner. So let's go ahead and put that in because I know that's going to, I know that's going to come into it. And then we've also got report winner, which does not return anything. These long, long variable names are already bothering me. Um, but I guess I'll stick with it. You'll find people who will tell you in programming books and things that you should use long descriptive variable names. Um, it's easy to overdo that. I think if you under, if you know what the variables are, the shorter the better. If you, if you can glance at them and, and understand what they're doing, like in these loops where I use I, some people that would actually have you do something like this, which, you know, would, and then you'd have this, which, yes, maybe counter is a little more descriptive than I, but if you've been programming for more than a week, you know, you, you glance at that and you know what I is doing. You understand that I is a counter, it's a loop counter, and so um, it's actually 
easier if you have any experience at all to read this because it's just a glance if you see counter you're gonna wait a second what's going on is counter important because it's a long word instead of just a letter so anyway you may see me you may see me using some short some short variable names just because I, I think in in the right circumstances they make more sense and they're also faster to type and read so if we're going to return the winner basically we just want to print out okay who won so in fact let's let's um let's make it a little smarter than that let's say if there's a winner then we want to print out who won else oops I, you can tell I don't do as much C programming as I do Perl programming because in Perl you can't do this business with the um, leaving out the brackets leaving out the curlies if there wasn't a winner then we want to print out game ended in a tie But if there was a winner, we want to say who the winner was. Okay, so let's put that at the beginning. So we want a character now. We want either X or, or, or O. But for now, let's just have it print out the... just have it print out the number of the player because remember the players as far as the program knows the players are one and negative one later I will make it more I'll make it nicer and have it print out um, X or O but I think I'm gonna save that for later all right so return winner is ready play a game is ready that leaves us with take a turn and each turn has a player who's going to be either one or negative one. Now, what happens in taking a turn? This is kind of the process, I guess, of, you know, I could be flow charting this or writing an outline or something. I'm just doing it as code as I go. You know, if it, if it was a more complicated program, maybe I would start with a, maybe I'd start with an outline. But this isn't that complicated. So, you just have to think, okay, what happens when you're playing tic-tac-toe? What do you do on a turn? Well, the first thing you do is look for a winner, right? Look for a winning spot. Because if there's a spot where you can win on this turn, it's, it's over. So, look for win. Again, same player. <clears throat> now, what happens if you don't find a winning spot? What's the next thing you do on a turn? Well, you'd look for block, look for a place to block, right? Because if the other guy has two in a row and you haven't blocked him yet, he's going to win on the next turn, so you need to block him now. Okay. Now, if you haven't now if neither one of those came true, if you didn't find anything with either one of those, then what do you do? Well, then you'd have to look for a play. Okay. And let me think here for a second. What if you get down to look for a play and you still haven't found one? Now that shouldn't be possible because we're only taking up to nine turns, right? <clears throat> right here we've got a loop it's only going to run nine times from zero to eight for values for I so take a turn should never get called more than nine times and so it should always be able to find something but if it doesn't basically that tells us we've got a problem we've got a problem with the logic of our program or a bug or something so it'd still be nice to check for that um, now I'm gonna set up here I'm gonna set winner to zero because that would that would indicate no one won this turn and then what we'll do is as we go through each one of these it will return to let us know 
um, what happened. So, <clears throat> what happens in Look for Win? I guess that's the. We're going to come back to this because we're going to need return values and tests on these things. So, we're not done with that yet. Because, for instance, after we look for a win, if we found a win, we don't want to look for a block or look for a play. I mean, we only want to take one turn here. We, you know, we only want to place one, one play per turn. So we'll be coming back and adding some logic there. But let's think about the look for win function. What does this do? All right. This is kind of where, this is where, as I was brainstorming it, I thought, okay, you know, this part I'll have to kind of work out as I go. Um, remember I talked before, we've got our eight possible rows to check. I'm just going to call them all rows, even though some of them are columns and diagonals, but we've got our eight thingies to check here. So I'm going to grab this, come over here, and I'm just going to plug it in here for now to, for, to look at so that's an array of things, right? An array of eight things that we need to that we need to go through. So I'm going to call it rows. It's going to have eight things, and each each row has three things in it. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and let's see. We're going to have. get rid of some space here. So I'm just setting those eight possibilities up as eight elements of an array and each one of those elements has three elements of its own. Um, I definitely cannot type and talk at the same time especially not reading and typing and talking, so I'm going to have to go back and forth. Alright, so rows is going to contain the eight possible, the eight possible, the eight possibilities that we need to check. And what are we checking for? All right, let's get rid of this stuff then. What are we checking for when we check a row? Well, first of all, that pretty much tells you, okay, we're gonna need a we're gonna need a loop. We're gonna go through this loop of it eight times. All right. Um, I don't know what we'll return yet. We'll wait and see about that. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so we want to go through this loop eight times and do what? Well, we want to know what's in this row. Let's say we're starting out with one, two, three. Okay, let's go back over and look at our tic-tac-toe board for a second. There's one, two, three. And let's say we're playing for player one, all right, or player X, let's say. A win would mean two of these are X, and one of them is a space. Now, we don't care which one is the space, right, at this point. We just want to know, is this a winning row, all right? Now, if, if it's X, that's a one, right, that's player one. This would still be a zero because no one's played there, and that would be a one. So a winning row for X for player one is a row that has two ones in it, right? Therefore, it adds up to two. So if a row adds up to two, then player X can win there. It's really the only configuration that, that you can have where a player can win is if, or player one can only win if a row adds up to two. 
if it adds up, let's say there's a negative 1 there, let's say O has already blocked it, well then it only adds up to 1. If you add those three digits together, you only get 1. It would have to be a 1, a 1, and a 0, which adds up to 2, for X to win. Now let's say O is trying to win. If this is O taking O's turn, that's a negative 1. And so O would be looking for a negative 1, a negative 1, and a 0. So O would be looking for negative 2. Okay, They'd be looking for a row to add up to negative 2. So this is where we're getting to why I used 1 and negative 1 for the players, because now all I have to do to find out if a row is a winning row is add up the row. So I can say, <clears throat> I'm going to need an int for total. I'm just going to make that T. I'm tired of these long names. I can say T equals... Now I have rows, whoops, rows i, because I'm going through this, I'm looping through this array, and then zero, the first element, which would be in this case number one, plus rows i one, plus rows i two. So that's going to get me the three elements of that row. It's going to add them up. Okay. Now I want to say if t equals what? Well, I can say if t equals 2. Now that would be if x is, if, if this is x's turn, right? But what if it's o's turn? Then we want to check for negative 2. This is where the math gets, I think, a little bit clever, because I can just say, well, okay, multiply the 2 by player. Because remember, player is going to be 1 if it's x, and negative 1 if it's o. So when you get here, you take the 2 times the player, and if it's x's turn, that's going to make this 2, and if it's o's turn, that's going to make this negative 2. And so then you've got this situation we talked about here where x is looking for two ones and o is looking for two negative ones. So if that's true, then this player has won, and we just need to fill in the fill in the spot and say this hey, this player has won. So now the question is, okay, which spot do you fill? This hasn't actually figured out which spot is empty yet. It's just you know, it's just um, figured out that there is an empty spot in this row which will create a win if the player plays in that spot. So we need to check the three spots and put a winner in the one that's empty. So, again, you're going to check three things. Sounds like another loop. You could, I mean, it's only three things, you don't really need to do a loop, but in fact I'm, I'm thinking about it as I type where maybe I'll do it both ways just for a demonstration. <clears throat> We're going to loop through the three things and say if, so we're, in, we're looking at rows, still looking at rows i, but now we're looking at cell j, which is going to be either 0, 1, or 2. If that is equal to zero, then it's an empty space, right? It's the the only it would have to be the only empty space, and so then we would fill it in with our player, whichever the player is, one or negative one, and then we're done, right? And we can return player as the winner. Okay. So, let me stop and think for a second, if that's correct. All right, so we found a row that added up to 2, or negative 2, added up to a winner for our player. We looked through that row at the three elements in that row. And as soon as we found one that was open, the only one that was open, we filled it and returned to the player to say this player won. OK. 
Okay. I think that is it for that one. And then if we don't, if we don't find any, we want to return zero to say, okay, yeah, no, nothing happened in this, nothing happened here. You know, we didn't find any winners. All right. So that takes care of look for win. And so we can come down here and say, okay, winner equals look for win. If winner, or let's say if, man, yeah, look thick here. Um, well, let's do it this way for now. I, I think I'll make it more elegant later, but if winner return winner okay because if if we find a winner we don't want to look for a block we don't want to look for another play we just want to return the winner All right. that's simple enough now looking for a block what happens when you're looking for a block well it's going to be very similar because if you're X now you're looking for a row that has two O's and a space. So now you're just looking for the opposite thing, where before x was looking for two ones and a, and a zero, now x is looking for two negative ones and a zero. We're just flipping it. So what x was looking for before, now o is looking for, and what what um, <clears throat> excuse me, what o was looking for, now x was looking for. So the question is, do I need to copy this whole thing here? Do I need to copy look for win into another function and called look for block and then just change one thing? Or can I fix this somehow? Sorry, knocked my microphone off the desk. Probably made a lot of noise. Um, all right. So is there a way I can modify look for win? Because uh, let's think about this. If I copy look for win, like I was about to do, I'll call it look for block. All right. What has to um, what does that do f what needs to change in this then to make it block instead of win well like I said the only thing it needs to do is look for the opposite of um, itself so if player is one it needs to be looking for negative ones instead of ones and if a player is negative one it needs to be looking for ones well, right here was the only place we tested that. When we multiplied the 2 by PL, the player. So all I should have to do is make that a negative 2. Because the rest of the time you get down here, you do want to fill in the player. You don't want to fill in the opposite of the player because you're trying to block. And then you want to return to say, okay, yes, this player did find something. So that's all I would need to do. Now, duplicating that much code is generally bothersome. You don't like to do that. I mean, it's not a big deal here because this is a small program, but the question is then, okay, can I, like I said, can I just fix this by adding another argument? Int PL, that was a mistake there anyway. Int PL, let's say int win, or we can call it let's just call it win or block make it very clear what this is all right now let's get rid of this other look for block so now we've got a now we've got a function called look for win and let's call it look for win or block and now it has a flag to say is it is it looking for a win or is it looking for a block and all we need to do then is here multiply this by win or block 
Now, if we want it to, do, to look for a win, we just need to be win or block to be 1, so it doesn't change anything. If we want it to look for a block, then we just then we need to make win or block negative 1 so that it flips this, makes this a negative 2 times the player. Okay. So now come down here to find look for win again. Make this win or block. And because our player okay, now let me think. Okay, so we're looking for a win first. So we'll just set we'll just call it with one. So it's looking for a win. When we're looking for a block, we'll call it with negative one. Okay. So now we've got one function that does both things, and just that one flag switches what it does. Okay. Um, this should be. I'm going to move that in there. All right. In fact, okay. So when it looks for a winner, let's stop and think about the logic again a little bit. When it looks for a winner, if it gets a winner, that means someone won, and so we want to bail out of this turn. We're done with this turn. And we also want to say that person won. But what if it finds a block? In fact, I'm going to change this because that's going to be misleading. Um, I'm just going to use R for result. I use R a lot for just result on things when I just want to get a result from a function and do something with it right away and not, uh, not keep it around and think about it. Um, in this case, R is the winner. Okay. In this case, R is the player who just blocked, but that's not a win. So we don't want to stop the game. We don't want to report that there was a winner. So we just want to return. Let's see, this this is where I gotta stop and think. We want to return that the turn we want to we want to signal that the turn is done. But but we don't want to signal a win. So, with the winner, we returned, yeah, hmm. Yeah, we just want to say that, we just want to say the turn is done. So how do we want to do that? Because like I said, we're, we're returning integers here. And we don't know, you know, we haven't really decided yet what does take a turn, where does take a turn come from, right here. So I assumed that take a turn would report the winner if there was one, but it could also just report that, hey, this person is done with their turn. That's really what we want take a turn to report, <clears throat> is if the turn is over. But it's also got to be able to report if there's a winner, because then it's got to be allowed of the whole thing instead of, you know, it's got to bail out of this game, not just this turn. <clears throat> so, the question then is, okay, what are my return values? I can return... Let's say I'm returning a 1 or negative 1. Put a comment in here. If I return a 0 for nothing happened but then I still need a value to return to say end of the turn well I could just return a 10 for that 
or, well, I could return two. Let's, um, let's go to the top here and define a couple things. When Let's just define the end turn as two. Define no play as zero. Okay. We're going to have a couple of simple little um, simple little things there too. And I probably yeah. Okay, I did that right. So one or negative one, zero is going to be no play for nothing happened, and in turn for a block. Okay. So after a win, we return the winner. That's that's good. But after the after a block, if it returns a player saying yes I yes I found a place to block then we want to return and turn okay and otherwise we want to look for a play okay, I'm gonna move this stuff down this may not this may be turning into not the most um, elegant way to do this part of it, but that's all right. You can always refactor later. Um, so now we need to look for a play. Now this is going to be different. We can't we can't turn the win winner block function into able to do this too because this is a different situation. So let's think about what this is going to return. Again, if it returns, it can't return a win, but it should return something, right? It should find a place to play. Um, if it doesn't, then something went wrong. So, when it returns, it should also just return end turn. In fact, we don't even really need to check its uh, return value, but let's do it just to be sure. If, if there's not R, if it doesn't return a spot, then let's print an error. We'll have to add some debugging and error logging later, but um, well, actually, let's let's put that. That really belongs in the look for play function. Let's not put it out here. Um, look for play, and then really we can just return end turn because we already know we didn't find a winner. All right. Hmm. I'll stop and think for a second again. Um, this is take a turn. No, I think I'm making this more complicated than it needed to be. Excuse me. I think I'm making this more complicated than it needed to be. If there's a winner, this is take a turn. All take a turn needs to do is you know, take the turn and then tell play a game, is there a winner? Because if there's a winner, we need to stop. But if there's not a winner, it doesn't play a game doesn't care why there wasn't a winner. It just wants to take the next turn. So we don't need this end turn business. We just need to look for a winner block. And if it found one, return zero. Yeah. And then look for a play and return zero. Okay, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take this stuff out of it. I think I was overcomplicating it. Alright. So it looks for a win or block. If it finds a win, or it looks for a win, really. If it finds a win, it says, hey, this player won. And then down here we deal with that. 
if yeah then it looks for a block if it finds a block it blocks and then just returns says nobody won on this turn so go ahead and take the next turn if it didn't find a block it looks for a play and again it just returns it doesn't it returns and says nobody won this turn either okay. now I'm not doing anything with R here so I don't really need look for play to return a value but I think I'm gonna have it do one anyway just because I may want to add that later I may want to add some functionality in there later to do error checking that kind of thing or just reporting hey who's playing who's whose turn is it that kind of thing so I'll leave that there so how do you look for a play well you're looking for an empty spot right so the very simplest thing would be to just start looking through the grid until you find an empty spot and play it so looking through the grid sounds like a loop now I do need to remember here when I'm looping through the board which I haven't even have I even looped oh you know what I got a problem there I gotta come back and fix okay yeah I'm, I was forgetting something um now looping through the board remember I said I'm gonna use a 10 a 10 element array and the nine elements of the board are going to be you know one through nine they're not going to be um, 0 through 8 just because I think it makes it easier to think about and one extra space in memory isn't a big deal um, so I want to loop through this will be 1 through 9 some people would make this um, less than or equal to 9 because I think that makes it clear uh, to me it's just this is this is more idiomatic to me or makes more sense to me this is one through nine all right look for a play so then I just need to say if the board space if that if that element of the board is zero then I found an empty space I can use and so I can play it by setting it equal to the, my player and return I'll just return the player for now. Like I said, it, this this isn't going to care, but um, I might add something later that does. Return the player. Otherwise, return zero because again, this should never this should never fail to find a play, but maybe it will, and then we'll we'll return zero to show that. Now we do return here. We we bail out here because we only want to play one spot. We don't want to fill in all the empty spots, right? Okay. So that looks for a play and then returns from the turn. All right. So let's back up a bit here. We've got play a game, does that stuff. We've got, we've got a way to look for a win and look for a block look for a play and then if it doesn't if and then the turn is over and so we'll come back here take another turn report the winner um, okay here I've got to fix a, I've got to fix a problem because this it, this here would add together one and two and three the actual numbers digits one two and three and then the next time through it would add together four five six that's not what I want I wanted to add together those elements of the board those in I wanted to use those as indexes into the board array and so I need this and I know that if you're not if you're not a programmer that's gonna look complicated but what I'm doing is I'm saying okay like the first rows I 
zero here, that's one, and so I want to say, okay, board element one. This is going to be two, so I want to say board element two, and then board element three, and so that's going to correspond to the first row in my tic-tac-toe board. Okay. So that gets me the total, and then when I come down here, again, I have to say, okay, I don't want to know whether that number up there, whether that index is zero, I want to know whether the board location is holding zero. And if it isn't, or if it is, I want to fill it with my player. Alright, now, that should be all I have to do there. Believe it or not, this thing is close to being done. Um, I think, unless I'm forgetting something. So, look for a play. Look for, like I said, this this is extremely stupid. You know, this is just gonna. Basically, what's gonna happen here? Or let's think about what's gonna happen in the game. X is gonna come through and take the very first spot. Okay. Then O is gonna look for a win. There's no winning of possibilities. Then there's. Here, let me copy. Let me make a copy of this. X is going to take the first spot, O is going to see no wins, no winning possibilities, no blocking possibilities, and so it's just going to take the second spot. Then X is going to take the third spot. O is going to look for wins, no, going to look for blocks, no, because this one here is already blocked. So O is going to take the fourth spot. X is going to look and see no possibilities to win, no possibilities to block, and so it's just going to take the fifth spot. O is going to look... Let's see what's O going to look for. Well, O is going to look for winning possibilities, which there aren't any. Then O is going to look for blocks. Well, there are blocks. Actually, there's two of them. The first one is going to be 1, 5, 9. It's going to get to, because it's both the diagonals. So it's going to hit 1, 5, 9 first. And so O is going to go here. And then X should find a win right here at seven five three so that should be that should be the final result of every game as long as the, as long as it's this stupid okay. so it is going to have to be smarter than this but I'm going to just start with it like this for now now we want to we want to print the board out right because we want to we want to be able to see what it looked like um, so let's have a function print board. All right. Now, I just want to print it pretty much like it is here. I just wanted this sort of thing separated by pipes. Um, <clears throat> again, we're thinking of a loop. Um, so this one, I less than 10, I plus plus. So we want to print each element of the board, and I'm just going to, for now, I'm just going to print, um, the element that's actually in the board, the, the, the number, and then we'll printify that later. Now as you're printing the board, you don't want to just print all nine spaces in a row, right? You want to print, um, You want to print the uh, the pipes and the um, new lines. So let's say if something we want to print. Um, let's take out that space. If something we want to print space pipe space right. That's what we want to print if we're between. If we're between digits, you know, columns, whatever. Otherwise, we want to print a new line to go to the next line. Okay. So the question is, what is the thing we want to test? How do we know whether we're in the middle or at the end of a line? Well, if you look at the numbers, the, the third one in each line is divisible by 3, right? So we've got another modulus situation here. If I modulus 3 is something that means there's a remainder and so we want to print the, the 
you know, we want to treat it like it's one of these ones. It's either one or two or four or five or seven or eight. We want to print the pipe, space, pipe, space. If modulus, if the modulus returns a zero, then we want to print the end of line. Okay. And let's, um, just for nicety's sake, let's print... Let's print a, um, let's see, how wide is that thing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, something like that. I guess it's eight wide. All right, so there's the printing the board for now. It's That's going to get more interesting, but let's deal with this for now. What's well, the first time I saved this file in a while? I've got these these plus symbols over on the left are coming from mag maggot magic um, to show that I haven't committed any of these changes yet. Um, let's do that actually. Uh, yes. Okay. So we've modified the C file, and we've also modified the the the, the .org file that I'm doing the design work in. Uh, come on, come on. What are we waiting for here? Maggot is stuck or something. Can I kill it? No, there I killed it. Not sure what was going on there. Um, weird. Empty message aborts the commit. Okay. Try that again. Okay. It was just stuck for some reason. Okay, see, Maggot shows you your changes down here, all the stuff you're going to commit. I'm just going to... Let's see. Okay. All right, so everything is committed now at this point. Probably should have done more commits along the way. That's the thing. The whole idea is, you know, to be able to. That's not what I want to look at. What am I looking for? The whole idea is to be able to um, roll back partial work if you need to. Although uh, the fact that there's the diffs there, I, you know, like I keep saying, but th this is a small, a small thing. Um, Okay, so let's print the board here on return winner. Because where do I... Or not, it's not supposed to be return winner, it's supposed to be report winner. That's a mistake. Report winner. I thought that sounded weird. So let's print the board here. Okay. Ready to try compiling. Let's, um... I was going to say, I can't have had no errors. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Um, okay. I can't have a void type to return with? Hmm. Interesting. What am I not... Oh, sorry. I was thinking... I think I was, I was thinking in parole for a second here. Wow, I can't believe I didn't have I had one error in that whole thing. That's unusual for me. Usually I have lots of lots of crap to clean up. All right, let's try running it. Okay, is that what we expected? Um, no, <laughs> we did not expect the game to end in a tie, and it's not a tie because if you look right here. It, it did do what I what we expected. It did do the layout we expected because 
they just took turns, but it didn't see that this was a win for some reason. It didn't see that when X got here, 1, 1, 1 was a win. So let's do this. Let's also print the board at the end of each turn, or the beginning of each turn, or because I don't want to if I print it after any of these returns, then uh, let's just put it here. Uh, I got something. Um. All right, so went the way I thought it was going to go, where X, although we don't see X's first turn for some reason, in this, well, sorry, I'm looking at, let's do it this way, okay, so the board starts out empty, then like figured, X took a turn, O took a turn, X took a turn, and they just started filling in across the top, like I said, but then it got here, and O didn't block, O just took the next thing. So the win or block thing is not working correctly. That's what's that's what this tells me. This, the win or block thing is not finding wins or blocks because then X just took the next space, didn't realize it was a win. So there's something wrong with the win or block logic, which, like I said, is not a surprise. I didn't expect everything to work perfectly from the start. <clears throat> so why would that be? What's the issue here? Um, well, let's put in just a simple print statement. This is sort of um, ad hoc debugging here. We want to say, okay, this is row... Total, okay, row total, um, okay, so we're looking for, I'm just going to fill in rows, And then the total. All right. So I wanted to print e each time it looks at a row. This is going to print out a lot of stuff, but that's okay because we're debugging here. Um, each time it checks a row, I want it to tell me what three cells it's checking and what the total added up to. Okay. I could have it tell me even more than that, but that's what we're going to start with. I'm just going to something wrong with my make file but um okay so so that's the board originally and x looks at it sees to all totals of zero and then the other the other function takes the the first spot okay then o looks and sees some ones nothing special x looks and sees some ones and some negative ones special. Then O looks and sees some ones and negative ones. Nothing nothing special. Okay. Then X. Okay, now X has taken that middle spot now at this point. So O should see some twos, and indeed O does see some twos. So the question is, why did O not think, okay, I need to block that? Because O didn't block it. O just went on and took the sixth spot. So why did O not stop right here at 159 and block? All right, that's the question. So right here, when these were 1, 5, and 9, and T was 2, why did O not block? what? Am I 
guy's still calling. Look for win or block. Look for win. Um, let's put a statement in here. blocking that's based on this flag and then the cell is just going to be row or rows i j we'll see if this if it even gets to this point it did not it did not get to that point Okay, so why did it not get to that point? What is it not liking here? Let's move that up here. Okay, we don't know about the cell yet, but we could know about the row. Um, we'll just take I. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got O blocking or intending to block in row six. Six, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six is yes, one, five, nine. That's the one we want it to be blocking in. So, okay, yeah, so it's coming through trying to win. It goes through them all trying to win, can't find any. Then it's going through them all trying to block, and it gets to this one and says, hey, I'm going to win or block in row six. But then it also sees the other possible block and it says, hey, I'm going to win our block there. So why did it do that? Plus, it didn't take either one of those. I mean, it didn't actually get to that part. So the question is, it got here. Why did it not get here? Why did it not get to this point? Let's put this back the way I had it. Where it's rows I, J. Because I think that'll, that'll make it just a little bit clearer what's going on. See, it says I'm going to win or block, but then it never actually does that. So why? Well, okay, let's look at this. We've got J going from 0 to 3, or no, 0 to 2. If the board space pointed to ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh. yeah okay so that's where I'm yeah let me think let me no maybe not let me think rose I J If that board cell is equal to zero, why would it not be equal to zero? It is equal to zero. So, why does it 
does it not find it? Well, let's add one more print line right here. When error blocking. Let's add one more. What's in the cell? I probably got something like an off by one error or something like that here. Well, it doesn't even get to that. Wait a sec. Oh, gee whiz. Yeah. There's the kind of mistake that sometimes takes a while to find. I had J's and I's mixed together in that in that loop definition. Alright, that's gonna fix it. I would just about bet. Alright, so yes, it gets to this point. He says, okay, I can win I can block that's the negative one here. I can block in row six, which is three six or which is one five nine. I look in the first spot. Um, there's a one, can't use that one. Look in the second spot, there's a one, can't use that one. Look in the third spot, hey, there's a zero. So I can win, in, or I can block in cell nine, and so O takes cell nine. All right, good. Moving on, X, yeah, X then takes the spot down here and wins. And X should win every time. So, um... All right. Let's, I don't want to take these out, these printfs out. Um, so what I'm going to do, change them to debug statements. All right, because I may want to, you know, when we start making it smarter about how it plays, I might want to be able to put those back in. So we're going to make that debug, and I'm going to go to another program. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Um, I'm going to grab a debug function that I've used for other things. Because you should always reuse code if you can. Um, So there's my debug function, which basically just prints something out if debug is set. So now that debug is not set, which I'm going to go ahead and define debug as a zero. Oh, now I've got warnings all over the place. Okay, I need, uh, I need to declare something. Uh, what do I need to declare? String.h, probably something else I'll check that out again probably yeah standard arg and a string maybe air yeah an air no let's get those three chicken dinner. Okay, so we've gotten rid of the cruft. Now it just shows the board as it goes along and it shows the winner. Okay, so two things to do here now. We want to make it print nicer. We don't, this printing with ones and zeros and negative ones is okay for testing, but it's obnoxious. So we print the board. We want to print an X for a one, an, an O for a negative one, 
and a space for a zero. Now we could do that, a couple different ways we could do that, but the way I want to do it, because I think it's kind of neat, is I'm going to have a macro I'm going to call P, and I'm going to call P with the value that's in the space. Okay. That way I'll be able to use this in various other places in the program because of, you know I've already been printing printing this stuff out. So now what I wanted to find up here, I'm going to think about this for a second, because um, I don't do a lot of macros, but I wanted to find the P of X as um, let's see, player. Player, okay, and then X plus one. Okay, I think that's what I was imagining in my head. Because let's go, let's, okay, I want another global variable then, which is just going to hold the possible players. Actually, it's going to be a character, a character array. which is going to hold O for negative 1, a space for 0, and an X for 1. All right, that's what I had said before. So what's going to happen here is when we call when we call this macro, a macro just replaces it's just it's just a text replace thing basically. So when I call the P of X, which sounds very algebra it's going to replace that with this player x plus one and the reason though for the plus one is this array right here you can't have a negative one index in an array at least I don't think you can um, you shouldn't anyway so these in this array are zero one and two but our players are negative one zero and one so we just need to add one to the player number to get the proper index into this array. All right, so that seems good. So now, any place where I print out the player, I can use that macro and then change that to a character instead of a number that it's going to print out. Same thing here. I can do P or P. Okay. Let's try that. All right, much better. Um, so I need another my print board. I need another dash on top and bottom. All right, so now it prints out nicer. The other thing then is to make it smarter. And I think I'm going to come back. I'm almost up to an hour and a half here. So I think I'm going to stop there. Basically, we've got it working. Um, it will play. It will recognize winning. Um, it will recognize winning situations and blocking situations. Um, we don't know how to deal with a full board yet because it can't get to that because it's too stupid. So in part three, we'll be working on the the logic of it making it a little smarter we want to make it just just smart enough that every game is a tie um, we're also going to add some looping and so that it can play multiple games at a time I'd like to be able to just turn it loose and see like you know how fast can it play a million games or a billion games or whatever um, that might be kind of interesting because I'm actually thinking after this I might write one in, a, in assembly language uh, maybe a couple of assembly languages actually because um, I've been getting into more of that um, and then it would be interesting to compare the C you know the the ability of or the speed of the C version versus the assembly version um, the assembly version would certainly take longer to code I mean this this thing is gonna max out at maybe three hours um, assembly language version would take days probably um, <clears throat> but it would be a lot faster. Not that, that matters for this, but if you're crunching, you know, crunching a lot of data, um, it can matter. So that's going to be the thing. Make it smarter um, and make it able to run 
lots of games since it is supposed to be a simulator we wanted to be able to run lots of games um, and make sure that it really did that it really is smart enough that all the games are ties all right so I think that's it for part two um, let's see let's save save everything here let's go to magic got some unstaged unstage changes to make stage them, commit them. All right, everything is clean. Um, all right, so let's make a couple notes for part three while we're here, and then that'll be the end of it make it smarter. Um, what else should we do? Um, might add some documentation in the comments might refactor into um, an include file. I'll talk about that in part three. This one's getting too long. So um, there's some things to work on in part three. So I hope to see you back for that one. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching.